for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff the Mad Cheese has always got another short video for you guys about Mad 23. Uh, the release date finally came out, and I thought it was a good time to just basically drop all the information when it comes to release dates, pre orders. I also have some uh, exciting rookie ratings. I got the top 10 fastest. Uh, Madden players, which I'll go over later in the video with some rookie ratings that will be included. Now, as far as what consoles you can get the game on this year, there's actually only going to be two different consoles. You can either get it on PlayStation or Xbox. There's not going to be any computer consoles apparently this year. Uh, no a Nintendo Switch. Um, that's something that uh, a lot of people were speculating that might happen, but apparently it's not. So, whether you're on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox, or Xbox Series X, um, or Xbox Series S, whatever Xbox you have, those are the only two consoles you're going to be able to get the game on this year. Now, as far as the additions this year, sometimes there's like three editions. This year, there's only two editions. I thought there was going to be three. I thought I heard there was going to be three because I thought that there was three different covers, but apparently there's only going to be a standard edition and an all-man edition. The standard edition is going to be $60. It's going to be a typical $59.99 with tax whatever and you're really not going to get much with that if you pre-order it in any way you will get your choice of two elite players uh, for your mutt team one offense and one defense uh, you get some all Madden gear and a, and a Madden strategy item ultimately you're not going to get a ton it's worth pre-ordering if you know you're going to buy it it's worth pre-ordering just to get those free things because the price I mean eventually the price does drop by the time you get to like November you typically can get the game uh, on Black Friday sale maybe like for like 40 bucks I know a lot of people like to do that so Unless you're going to do that, if you're going to get the game at any point in time between then and November, it just makes sense to pre-order it somewhere and get the additional uh, free stuff. Now, the second edition, and this is the edition that I typically end up getting, is going to be the all-man edition. This year, it's going to be 100 bucks. It's going to be 9999 plus tax. Uh, it says you get all the pre-release content that I'm showing you here. Uh, you're going to get three days early access. Now, the game, I didn't say, but the game comes out on August 19th, which is exactly what I guessed, by the way, if you caught my video a couple days ago. But if you get this edition, you will have the option to get three-day early access, which is also what I said in the video. Typically, you can get it on the Friday going into the weekend. So that would be the 16th if you get this edition, which means you can play the game all weekend as much as you like. Now, you also, I'm sure, it doesn't say anything about this here, but typically you also have the option uh, if you have EA Play or what used to be called EA Access, uh, you typically can get the game five days early than that for like a 10 hour demo which it's not really a demo I mean the, the progress that you make does count towards uh, you know your future you know mutt team whatever uh, whatever time you put into it does count towards the game once you unlock the full game but ultimately you're getting 10 hours of cap play time over what I, what I usually is like a five day span so if that's the case you could get as early as august 11th which once again i will end up doing so i can make content for you guys as soon as possible now after that you get a lot of the same things you get in the standard version you get to choose uh two ultimate team players one offense one defense that's the same the man strategy item the all man gear the all man gear is probably for it's probably not even, i don't even know if that's for mutt that could be for uh the other game mode that you know is kind of dying off i'm not even really remember the name the game where they came out with like two years ago uh that's supposed to be like two nba 2k's park uh that mode isn't really you know something that i care to have anything for so i'm not sure if man gears for ultimate teamers for that uh, you also get exclusive early access challenges, which I kind of went over for the three-day early access. You can do some some mutt challenges to basically get your team uh, pumped up a little bit quicker. Now, as far as the man points, I really don't know how I feel about the man points because it is something new. They didn't typically give you uh, currency to buy packs. They typically just gave you the packs. So when you got the new game, you would open up a bunch of packs and you would basically get to like a 75 overall team just like that. The Madden point seems a little suspicious. I'm sure that they'll have some sort of sale when you get the game matching the amount of Madden points. If you want to spend it there, you can. But there's some, you know, you, we all know how cheap EA is and how much this whole mutt thing is a scam to make money anyway. So I wouldn't be surprised if they give you 4,600 Madden points, but the pack wants like 4,800 Madden points. You know what I'm saying? So that worries me a little bit. We have to keep an eye on that. Ultimately, I think I'd prefer to just get the packs right out the gate, which is what I'm used to. But it's not a bad thing to have the Madden points say you don't want which, whatever you see in the beginning and you hold on to the first big sale or whatever. But that's kind of a weird number and it's kind of a, you know, that makes me suspicious a little bit about their intentions. It's, it's also kind of lazy, if you, if you ask me. It's something that feels like they just slapped Madden points on it rather than giving you packs. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know how I feel about that. I feel kind of, kind of weird about that. The last thing is if you're on PlayStation 4 or you're on the regular Xbox, 
uh, the dual entitlement might be worthwhile. So basically, I mean, it says this version is free, but if you buy this version and say come Christmas time or whatever, you get the updated, you know, new generation console, you immediately can play this game on that console, which is not available on the standard version. So it seems expensive for that. I think in the past it was like an extra 10, 20 bucks. But to me, it almost looks like a throw in compared to all the other things that they have here. Uh, and ultimately, dual entitlement is important. If you think you're, if you're on Xbox and you're on PlayStation on current gen consoles, it, people are going to be moving on to next gen. A lot of people are going to be moving on to next gen pretty soon. So you can get that taken care of as far as Madden is concerned uh, simply by buying the uh, the All Madden Edition. Now, there is one more piece of information at the bottom here. A limited time only pre-order the All Madden Edition by July 22nd and receive an All Madden Team Elite player. So that there will probably just be like an 85 overall player or something like that. Uh, which will, you know, it's a, these are players that are good to start your team with at the end of the day. These players, uh, the you know, all, every free player you can get if you play Mutt helps out big time early on, but it really doesn't last for very long. Probably only lasts for a couple of weeks, but it's nice. Uh, it'll probably be a nice head start. And typically these free players aren't fast enough to really be relevant anyway. Like they're typically uh, good names with low speed and that's really, you know, pointless. So at the end of the day, if you spend money on your uh, Madden team anyway, I don't know if it's really worth it because all you're really getting for this is gonna be the Madden points. And then last but not least, since we're talking about speed and its importance to Madden, I came across this. I don't know if this is official, but I wanted to add it to the video. It's a really uh, interesting look at some rookie player ratings, which obviously is one of the big reasons people buy the new game is to get the rookies. Uh, we have the 10 fastest players in Madden 23. Like I said, I don't know if it's official, but pretty much every player that isn't a rookie is the official speed rating from last year. Tyreek Hill leads the board with the only 99 speed guy on the on the field. Then you have Jamison Williams coming in second with 98 speed. That's the rookie from the Detroit Lions. He might not be available in the NFL right away, but he'll be available in Madden right away. And that speed is huge. I didn't know he was that fast. The guy didn't run a 40 time coming into the NFL offseason like typically rookies do. He didn't. He, he was injured. He didn't have a chance to do that. But I guess they saw enough on tape because they gave the guy the second fastest speed in Madden coming in as a rookie. That's going to be huge, especially if you use the Lions. People might pick the Lions as a franchise team just because of guys like this on the squad. Uh, also tied for second is Quez Watkins. Um, he got his speed rating boosted big time. I think he was only like a 94, and then he jumped it to a 98. Definitely a fast player. I, you know, the Eagles were looking to get Jamison Williams, too. There was a lot of rumors that they wanted Jamison Williams. Imagine if they had both of those guys. If they did draft him instead of trading for A.J. Brown. If they would have got both of these guys, they would have had two 98-speed receivers on the field at the same time. That would have been absolutely nuts. Uh, also tied for second, we have Kalon Barnes, who I think is an undrafted guy. Not sure. It, it, speed on offense is not the same as speed on defense. If you have a really fast corner, but he doesn't have good zone or awareness or man coverage, he'll still get cooked. So that's a guy. If you're on a franchise squad and you want to work a guy up, I would definitely try to work him up as much as possible and get him out there on the field. But ultimately, in regular game modes, he's not going to pay a ton of dividends. Now, when it comes to the 97 speed guys, Jalen Waddle was 97 speed last year, making him and Tyreek Hill the fastest duo on this list. Uh, McCole Hardman he used to be part of the fastest duo with Tyreek Hill. Now he's by himself. Still very fast, though. 97 speed, plenty of speed. On the Browns, we got Anthony Schwartz. On the Cardinals now, we have Marquise Hollywood Brown at 97. And then last but not least, we have another rookie joining the ranks, which was Tyquan Thornton, who I think had the fastest combine 40 time. He got drafted, I think, in the second round by the Patriots, which was something that I mentioned uh, when I did a video about that as well, as he was definitely going to bring a lot of speed, much, a lot of much needed speed. The Patriots don't have a ton of classic Madden weaponry to, on their rosters. They don't typically have a ton of fast guys, they usually just have a ton of like average guys. So as Adding him to the Patriots is going to be huge. And that's all the information I have. So if you guys want to see more videos like this as I come across this type of stuff, hit the like button let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.